Hello, my name is Jonas. In this video, I will show you a great footage from the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K in HDR using an Aero Alexa PowerGrade. But before we begin, remember to like and subscribe. That's highly appreciated. So, I started experimenting with HDR or High Dynamic Range Video for a little more than a year ago now, which was when I wrote my master thesis, HDR and the Colorist. If you're interested, I suggest you check it out in the link in the description below. I also created a video called How to Create HDR Video, The Ultimate Introduction. Among a few other tutorials on this subject, this is available in my playlist called How to Create HDR Video. This particular video will focus on grading footage from the Pocket 4K camera in HDR. And I will show you my workflow that I used to solve problems that I had when doing so. I've used one of my latest HDR videos called Spring Water in HDR, The Forest, as an example for this tutorial. This was one of the first videos I graded using this exact workflow. Before diving into this project, I need to give you some general background when it comes to grading footage from the Pocket 4K camera. I made a previous video about the single biggest issue I have with this camera, which is related to the colors it produces. In short, when working in SDR or standard dynamic range video, I use a LUT from Emotive Color, which is meant to emulate the look of an Aero Alexa. This LUT helps me get a good starting point, which gets me closer to the look and colors that I want. The problem with this approach when working in HDR is that the LUT doesn't work very well with expanded range, which reaches well above 100 nits. It also seems that working in a color managed workflow, which I utilize for HDR grading, yields different results when it comes to colors compared to what I normally get when using this LUT in SDR. Now, colorist Jean Melara quite recently released his own Aria Alexa conversion LUT for the Pocket 4K camera. What's interesting is that he also sells this as a power grade option, which caught my attention. Here I imported his power grade into my project. If we right click and choose display node graph, we can have a look at different nodes it is made up of. And since I like to use groups in my projects, I split this power grade up and place the nodes as pre-clip and post-clip adjustments. Before we dive into the power grade, let's take a quick look at my project settings. As I said, I utilized a color mesh workflow when grading in HDR. And since I shoot raw, I don't need to set the input color space, because Resolve automatically detects this anyway, and debayers my clips into the timeline color space. It might seem odd that I set the timeline color space to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 when working in HDR, but that seems to work good for me, and this particular workflow. Often when working in HDR, you might use a scene-referred or camera color space, such as Air Log C, Red Log 3G10, or in this case, maybe Black Mag Design Film. Some colorists like to use a display-referred color space instead, which, when working in HDR, most likely will be Rec. 2100 ST2084 which utilizes the PQ curve. But for now, I'm sticking with Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. If you take a look at the raw tab, I have my clips set to ISO 800 and 5600 Kelvin with a zero tint. And this is what Melara recommends, but you can of course change the ISO value to for example 400. I also made a previous video about how I expose the Pocket 4K when shooting raw, and how ISO works on this particular camera. Feel free to check that video out as well. So, the power grade starts off with a curve to match the Alexa better. If you use ISO 400, Miller recommends that you disable this node. Next, we have a color space transform that converts from Blackmagic Design Pocket 4K Film Gamma into Linear. And I changed it to instead convert from the timeline color space into Linear. Since this power grade is meant to work in the Blackmagic Design Film color space from the Pocket 4K camera, and my timeline color space is set to Rec. 709, I also changed the output color space to Blackmagic Design Pocket 4K Film Generation 4. Now, if you intend to use the ISO 800 node, a more correct way would be to have another color space transform before it, to convert into Blackmagic Design Pocket 4K Film color space. But I didn't think of that for this project, and I probably won't use this node in future grades anyway, since I'm not matching to Alexa footage. A nice thing about working in linear is that you can use the gain wheel to adjust the exposure of the image with an accurate reading in stops. A stop corresponds to either half or double the amount of light, and when in linear, halving or doubling the value of the gain wheel 
corresponds to a one-stop adjustment. Setting the gain wheel to 0.5 corresponds to lowering the brightness by one stop. And 0.25 corresponds to minus two stops. Raising the gain wheel to 2 corresponds to brightening the image by one stop. Here at the clip level, I also made some adjustments specific to this particular clip, using the highlight log wheel, a gradient, and the contrast. In the group post clip, we can find the rest of Melara's power grade. Here you can see the 3x3 matrix node and the tints node. This is where the magic happens. By toggling these two on and off together, we can see a big change in color. Here we also have another color space transform to go out from linear to R log C gamma. Finally, I place the array to Rec 09 LUT from Melar's power grade with another color space transform. You can skip this node if you wish to work in Alexa log C color space and gamma instead of Rec 709. Or keep this node and make a grading before it, after the tints node. That's totally up to you and personal preference. In this particular grade, I've also added some saturation, adjusted the black level, contrast, and color slightly. And that's it. So I hope this tutorial was helpful, and let me know if you wish to see more of these in the future. If you have thoughts or questions, please leave a comment below. Also, remember to like and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching, until next time, goodbye.